So here's the question. You're from Detroit. Yes, sir. Born and raised in the suburbs. So that's kind of like being from Chicago. A little bit, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Why the fuck does anybody live here in the winter? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, the plane lands yesterday, and I look outside, and it's snowing. Or uh, Thursday, whenever the hell it was. It's day 62 of C2E2. Uh, and yeah, I was like, how... And I've gotten soft, like, you know, I grew up, I grew up in the suburbs of Detroit and like, you know, we had dogs and cats and I'd, I'd go walk the dog and, and like my shorts and like a flannel and the boots and no socks. And now I'm like, I've, I'm, I'm cold right now. I want like 17 more layers on me. I've Have been you gotten soft long. or you've gone insane? <laughs> I think maybe it's a combination of both. I'm imagining like the Detroit I've seen, which right. is not far from the Detroit of Robocop. <laughs> well, I mean, in so, the era I grew up in, sure. Yeah. But you know, I grew up in the suburbs and it was mostly, you know, everybody worked for, you know, the automobile company. You were either an engineer, or you worked the line, or, you know, you worked in finance yeah. or something like that. It was, it's you a, grew up it's in a, a spring state, so. yeah, I grew yeah. up in a, it's a very blue collar town. So like, you know, like I remember even as a kid in high school, like, like, oh, I want to like, yeah, I want to make movies. And they're like, Okay, Get but out like, of here, you like, fucking nerd. Well, what's less that? It was like, it was like, it was more like, well, that will be what you do on the weekends. But what do you do during the week? Yeah, I was like, exactly. no, that's, I'm not going to have weekends. I'm just going to do that 24 hours a day. So it was hard to translate, you know. And at that time, there wasn't like the internet or any of that stuff. So there was no outlet for it. Like my internet as a kid was like Starlog magazine, and my brother and I would pour over that. And be like, what's RoboCop? Like I don't know what it is, but I'm circling it on the calendar, you know. Like that was it. Uh, the first movie I ever saw in the theater was Star Wars. Yes. And I remember. I remember the whole experience very vividly, but I also remember afterwards. I mean, I was into it. I wanted to. Know, I wanted to have. I wanted to be a Jedi and all that stuff. But the question I asked my parents afterwards was like, "Who made that? And how'd they make it?" Mm -hmm. You know, I wanted to make something like that. Yeah. And uh, you know, at that time, that was right when action figures started kind of coming out. And I remember my brother and I, we got all the the figures that we could afford. You know, which was like. I remember I got like R2-D2 before the movie came out. I was like, great, I got a trash can. What is this? <laughs> right. But we started taking those figures and telling our own stories. And, we, you know, we couldn't afford like the play sets, like the Death Star, none of that shit. And like we just started telling our own stories. And, you know, my brother being older than me, he, he, um, he read at an early age. So he had read all these stories too. And so we started making up our own stories. And it was just that act of like playing, you know, it, like creativity to me has always been about playing and making up your own stories. And I guess nowadays you'd call it fan fiction. We were basically making our own, you know, Star Wars yeah, stories. Sure. Um, but yeah, it started that that early, and and it was it was like, why would I want to do anything else? Like like I have no skills otherwise. <laughs> I originally got into comics for my brother too because he used them to teach me how to read, and I was like, well, this is amazing. Like, yeah. and it's at that time he I couldn't used them to, to teach you how to read. Yeah, he used them to teach me how to read because he's three years older, and he would. It was much easier for me to kind of figure out like, oh, like. Spider-Man's doing this and he's yeah, saying that, you know. I mean, it literally is like when they teach a foreign language and they say like, cat, and show you a picture yeah, of a cat. Yeah. I was like, Spider-Man, I know him <laughs> yeah. from Electric Company, yeah. that's my boy. There was a guy that came out of the table yesterday and I turned the camera on like a bunch of people who, a couple of people who were in line. Yeah, yeah. And one of the guys I interviewed for a second was a fourth grade teacher who was oh, like, wow. oh, I do comics literacy for fourth grade. That's awesome. I am a fourth grade elementary school teacher and I have a whole shelf dedicated to graphic novels to help get kids involved who are kind of reluctant to just jump into a regular novel. So I, I rotate them out every month. Um, like for a Black History Month I had all African American characters and actually for our Black History Project we studied African American comic characters and kids did bios and then had posters up of the characters. So for, to pass fourth grade I made two comic books. Oh cool, cool. I made an Iron Man comic. All right. And I think it was two Iron Man comics and then I did a, a this was when Iron Man wasn't even cool, right? Yeah, right, right, <laughs> right, right. And then I did a, a mural okay. on the wall on like that, you know, that like construction paper. Yeah. That was uh, all characters I created. Oh, cool. Like my, my yeah, my fifth grade science teacher got me involved in comics. Oh yeah. I wasn't doing so well, and she noticed that we had a product about adhesives, and so she was doing like a sticker book. And it was a Marvel sticker book, and she, had, you know, we would do adhesives. And she would give out us stickers. She noticed I was into it. So she made a deal with me, like, you keep doing well, get better grades, and I'll buy you a comic book. And they were like 75 cents at the time. Yeah. So that was my end. 
So I, I would I was take tests and stuff, and I would know words. Yeah. That yeah. like other people didn't know. Yeah. I, even though I would mispronounce shit, like I would call. Chris Claremont. Yeah. <laughs> like Caliban. For years, that motherfucker was Kabbalion. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> That's crazy. So the past wow. fourth grade, I made an Iron Man comic. Wow. So did you yeah. move out just on a wing and a prayer and just start like yeah. doing spec scripts? No, no, no. I, I went to University of Michigan uh, and I met uh, my best friend, uh, Steve Shabosky, who's a, a writer and director. Um, and he had, he went to USC, but all of his buddies went to U of M and they were all actors. So I, we all kind of had similar friends. And then he made a movie. I worked on that movie. I dropped out to work on the movie. And then I applied to USC. I went to USC and studied screenwriting. But my last year, my parents were like, okay, like, time to get a job. And uh, I got lucky. I, I worked on uh, the new Woody Woodpecker show uh, as a PA. What? And, uh, and animated show? Yeah, yeah. Which, unless you've been to Brazil recently, you haven't seen. Because yeah. that's place, basically the only place it, it, it runs. It's very popular in Brazil. Uh, but I, I just happened to be at the right place at the right time. They let me uh, uh, pitch on a story. I sold a couple stories. And then I, I wrote a couple seasons of that show right out of college. Um, and that, then from there it was like how do i get into tv into live action at that time animation wasn't quite as uh, open as exciting as it is now uh, it was a little bit more limited um, and i really wanted to get into live action and um, eventually just kind of worked my way over but my original intention was like i applied to usc thinking like oh, i'll never get in and i'll just like i'll go out there and i'll just make movies because that's what you do yeah <laughs> my regular day job is working in tv and I was hanging out with a group of writer's assistants, which is kind of like the job you get before you become a writer. And there's a whole group of us that like, we all kind of hung out because it's a weird job and it's, it's different on every show. And we would just kind of get together and like go to a bar and commiserate. And it wasn't like we were commiserating, like bitching about stuff. It was more like, what is this job, you know? But I was chatting with this guy who, who, who was like, I don't know, three or four years into his career. And I was like, God, I just feel like the hardest, the hardest job is that first job. If I could just get that first job. And he stopped me, he was like, no, the hardest job is your second job. Because like the first job, you're like, it's going to be by hook or crook. You're gonna, it's going to be a miracle. You're going to get lucky, and then that second job, you're going to come around and like that one's when you're you're actually like you got a sense of like, wait, maybe I can do this. Mm -hmm. And then there's pressure that you hadn't felt before. And he was right. And then I think for me, it was I, I I got some work, you know, doing some freelance here and there, and then I got a staff job, my first staff job. But it was that second job. Like I was like, wait a minute, like maybe I can do this professionally. It's, it's hard to know how you're going to burn those grinding years, you know, and you got to choose wisely. I, I, I was just chatting with a young lady at my table the other day and I was like, I was like, yeah, like you, you may be envious of where I am now, but I'm also a cautionary tale. Like I spent years grinding, doing the wrong thing. And, and she makes like videos and stuff. And I was like, you're doing the right thing. Like, you're making stuff. Yes. Like go grind and make stuff. Don't go grind like I did and be like, well, what am I going to write today? Like, like I spent too much time kind of worrying about what it was going to be rather than just making it. Right. And just actually making stuff. Um, I worked on a show called Supernatural, which um, doesn't have a traditional writer's room. Yeah. And so my agent at the time was like, how do you feel about independent study? And I was like, I'm scared. I like structure and I, <laughs> I'm not good with free time. But what that, that show gave me so many opportunities and I'm so grateful for it. But one of the things that allowed me to learn how to do is how to like multitask. And not multitask in the way like, oh, I'm spinning a bunch of plates, but like how I can work on more than one story at one time. Mm -hmm. And the best gift for that for me was, number one, it's right when I started working in comics. As a result of that, I started writing comics and then I sold a pilot while I was still working on the show. And what I found was for me, like I get kind of in a rut with the same thing. Like, or I just, I'm, like after a while, I'm just beating my head against the wall on it. Whereas with this, I can kind of shift gears. And so like, I, because I'm in LA and most of Marvel people are in New York and some artists are you know, in Spain or wherever, I wake up to a lot of emails. So like I do comics work in the morning after having breakfast with my wife. I take a lunch break, go for a walk, get out of my head, play video games, whatever. And then I do TV or movie stuff in the afternoon. And there's something about changing gears, changing mediums yeah. that has like, I thought it would maybe make me burn out a little while. And when I was doing too many monthly books, I did feel a little bit of burnout. But being able to shift gears and not just be so focused, because you know how it is. Like when you're on a story and you're like a dog with a bone, yeah. and after a while you're like, is the Am I eating the bone or is the bone eating me? <laughs> like, I was like grinding my teeth now. I'm like, what's happening, you know? And with this, it's like it's a different bone and it's a different feel. It's a different taste, literally. And there's something about that. I mean, who knows? Ask me in a year, I might be ground out from it. I might be too much. And I, I, might, I might start a new job, which may take me away from being able to multitask as much. But there's something about switching mediums that I feel like I don't feel... Um, 
it's the fatigue. I don't know. It's, it's story fatigue for me is a thing. It's like it is. when you're beaten on a story, you're like you want to get it right. And yeah. there's that there's that myth that and you know, like because we 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 <laughs> we broke bread and broke story. You know, like there's that myth in your head where you're like, oh, I, I need to get this perfect. I need to get it right. And it's like, well. There's a million different ways to tell the story, and there's probably like a hundred that are really good, and there's probably like 50 that are awesome. You just gotta find that sweet spot. But when you're looking at the full field, especially early on, or a, 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 with an ongoing story, when, you're, when you've told 20, 30 issues or something, you're like, do I have anything left to say? But being able to, I don't know, being able to come back to it fresh, you know, that's another thing that Supernatural gave me, because like, we had an unheard of amount of time to work on scripts. So I would bang out a script really fast to kind of try to keep that muscle alive. And then I would leave it for like a week and come back to it. And like, by the time you come back to it, if you give it enough time, cause you know, like, like you can do a lettering pass on a script. You're like, who wrote this garbage? <laughs> this is terrible, you know? Uh, but like, you can look at it fresh in a way. And I don't know, there's something about switching mediums for me that I can like, even if it's only half a day later, I can like go like, oh, well, I don't know who wrote this garbage yesterday, but I'm gonna fix this shit right now. Yeah. So there's a guy named George <laughs> who smokes a lot of pot. <laughs> All right. And he said that he likes to do his lettering pass high. Really? And I was like, so you, he said, yeah, it's like I'm a different person. And I was like, so Green George comes out. <laughs> Green George's like, I'm going to burn this yeah. motherfucker down. Yeah. Green, like, it was like you literally summon him from another dimension. <laughs> Do you think, though, as you're going on, like, because everyone starts off, a friend of mine said, like, you start off working hard and eventually you work smart. And like that's where you want to get to, you know, yeah. so you're not like burning out. You like, do. do you feel like you're kind of moving, like, you know what I'm saying? Cause like you're in a game and you're like, oh, I know how to do this. Cause like I, I worked on my free throw. Like I do yeah. this motion and then it goes in the basket. Like the difference is, is the sports have a, uh, a binary outcome. <laughs> you win or you lose. You win or you lose. <laughs> I can know I'm at my best. I can know I'm doing my best work and the thing that I feel the best and most confident about. And it might not be what an audience wants right yeah, yeah. or yeah, understands yeah. yeah so therefore it might not be popular yeah and that's the thing that's hard to wrestle with yeah yeah like how do you yeah. get to be in 50 or 60 remember. and was, still I, relevant and it was, i can't remember. Some, one of the comp, comp writers i met was like it's like my biggest fear is just running out of ideas you know and i was just like I've never you know, had that fear. yeah like like i was like i was like i don't think that ever happens i think it's more of like you either run out of you know real estate you know relevance wise mm -hmm. or you know you get lazy yeah you know like that's it, it it's a job it's or a job. you maybe physically become so that's worn true down yeah, yeah. That if you're an artist and and yeah 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 yeah, yeah. or I, you you know you never know what's gonna alter your your existential you <laughs> i do wonder though about like that because a lot of guys that i've met in like the last i don't know three or four years of being in comics like are guys like us that are that are that are from blue collar towns, from blue collar families, that had a work ethic. I don't want to say beaten into them, but like you were surrounded by it, and yes. either through osmosis or from just doing it, you just had that sense of like, I get up, I, I have breakfast, I go to work, yep. I go to lunch, I go back to work, I go home. You know, like that's been the biggest problem for me is like leaving work at work. You know, because yeah. sometimes you want to work, and I like. I try to like I try to finish work at the end of the day now, but like that that blue collar mentality I feel like is a is a blessing, you know. There, you can consistently know that I'm sitting somewhere working. Yeah. You got up today and you were like, oh, let's go get coffee, and but now we're here here you are yeah, working. Exactly. You know what I mean? I was like, like I better get this in. <laughs> right, right, right. You know, I was like, like coffee. I, Who needs coffee? Yeah, I was like, you still I, haven't even gotten coffee. I know. I was like, if I if I sit down with Robbie, I could talk to him for an hour, and then now I've got four interviews. <laughs> right, right, right. You know, and it was like, or I can lay in this bed for you've another got, thirty minutes. You got the ABC always be closing. Yeah. Uh, the discipline to me is just getting up and making it, making stuff, whatever it is. Like, that's, that's the difference. Like, cause you know, we sit at the tables all day, like at shows like this and people ask like, how do you get into it? I was like, just, just, I know it sounds stupid, like simple, but just make stuff. Right. If you can manifest, that's the biggest difference between everybody, you know, between like one side of the table or the other side Absolutely. of the table. I, it really bugs me when people are, get real competitive about the extreme conditions of weather that they're proud of. Yeah. They're like, you don't know cold, <laughs> you don't know heat. You don't know earthquakes. There's a, it's always a th funny thing when people come to Heroes Con for the first time and they're always like, whoa, what is this? I like that we're literally recording a discussion about weather. <laughs> a couple of old dudes. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna draw a cartoon dog. <laughs> okay. It's like asleep onto my lap. <laughs>